Welcome to Zero Experience Required. Today, we're going to be making this. It's a mount for my camera, which lets me get very low shots. It's adjustable. Put it all the way straight up. And we're making this so I can get better videos of working on cars. So here's the plan. This piece is going to be the base. We're going to put a hinge on that base. That hinge is going to support another piece of wood, which the camera is going to go on to. That camera has a piece like this, which we're going to use a dovetail to have it so it just slides right in. With the camera on there, we're going to need to cut it to basically this length for the main board and this length for the camera. We don't need much for the camera except the uh, base. Then we're going to make a bracket out of this that's curved, which is going to have a bolt coming out of this piece. And then I'm going to make a knob that's going to hold this nut. So I've recently been lent this router table, so I'm not familiar to it, but what I'm going to try to do is route the dovetail bit out this entire section. I decided the fence that came with it was a little too scary to use, so I'm using this one. And here's an example why feed direction is very important. Very important. Well, that was a failure. I guess feed direction really does matter. Because no matter how hard I pressed, I could not overcome the force of the blade wanting to go this way. But I was able to carve out enough to figure out if this depth is right, and it is. So, I'll be able to use this as a guide for the next piece. It's a much better success. Now all I have to do is clean it up. So it's looser than I wanted, but it's good enough because there's no chance it's going to actually point down. It's only going to be pointing up. Since the hinge I picked out doesn't sit flush on the plywood, I'm going to have to uh, round up some material. So I've set the depth, and I'm just going to run it all the way across. Okay, the fence is secure now. Now the hinge will work. Now that everything fit together, we need to mark the holes for pre-drilling and then screwing. I'm going to be using these short screws that I found. I only drill two holes in each piece because, honestly, this is not really going to be having much force on it. So, to use this bolt, I gotta get rid of this head. So, how do you get a bolt without a head in? You put it in the chuck of a drill and you just screw it in. So, how do you transfer the markings like I just did? You hold the piece up to it, and you carefully hold it, so you can actually hold a pencil to the bolt and just let it all the way up. And it will transfer the mark, and you do it for both sides, so you know exactly where to cut with the scroll saw or the bandsaw. I'm going to use a bandsaw, but you can try it with the scroll saw. Now I need to cut off the base of this. So now all we have to do is secure that piece. So drill in some holes and then screw in the screws after countersinking. Next we're going to be making the uh, knob for adjusting. You've got to center the hole and then drill it. And then sand it to a shape that's pleasing to the hand. I just make it so it's nice and smooth in all the corners. Then drill enough of a hole for the nut to fit in, and then force it in. With the addition of this last piece, it's now adjustable. I 
I also uh, cut out a uh, wood washer just so this part wouldn't be forced over and break. So next step is gluing this thing up. I don't record the glue up, but here's a sample of the kind of footage you can get with this camera mount. And it's actually very nice. I did a tie rod video earlier using this thing and it was very helpful. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you and bye.